This is a video about video games. If you want my thoughts on the semi-auto versus pump action debate IRL, check out the plethora of gun videos where I bring this up. Today we are going to be focusing on video game shotguns, their balancing, good and bad depictions, and talking about how the digital makeup of a pump action comes to be. So it's me, Inflated Ballsack, and let's get right on into it. Back in early 2022 or late 2021, right before the original Warzone, i.e. my saving grace during lockdown in the middle of the jungle, was unceremoniously shut down, a meta-defying weapon took center stage. The Origin 12 was fast, punchy, and in close quarters could chew up any tryhard AR of the month users. It was amazing because finally a strategy other than laser beam full autos or slow but heavy bolt action snipers was actually viable. Naturally, the COD community, known for their great attention spans and civil manners, rioted. I've talked in prior videos about how well balanced this shotgun was for a multiplayer shooter, being viable but still having serious weaknesses at given ranges. This is a rare exception. Usually a semi-auto shotgun is nerfed to kingdom come, so as to not invalidate other close range options. Take Titanfall 2's Mastiff. It's slow, kicks like crazy, and at the game's high speeds requires you to A, slow down and make yourself an easy target, or B, go super sweaty. <laughs> Either way, there are objectively better choices, including the much better balanced, albeit a little weaker, EVA-8, which functions similar to the Origin 12 now that I think about it. Then we have the Saiga from RE8. RE8 is what I call a level up sandbox, in which each weapon category has an ascending hierarchy, where each new unlocked weapon is better than the last giving you the feeling of leveling up when you get something new. So when you get the Saiga, you're expecting the Tactical 870, but faster, stronger, and with faster reloads. Well, it is stronger, and the reloads are much faster. But this is the slowest firing shotgun in the game. Like why? Even the pistols evolve into full auto weapons, like why did you neuter this gun so brutally? I mean, you don't want to go too fast either and end up like Modern Warfare 2's AA-12. Point is, balancing semi-auto shotguns is hard. One wrong step and it's either too powerful or completely useless in comparison to the rest of the sandbox. But you want to know what's easy? A pump action shotgun is so much easier to implement well, because there is so much more that happens between pulling the trigger and shooting. I've broken down a few phases to the pump action experience. The first shot is your introduction to the power that you now hold. A good video game shotgun will have a violent flash, recoil impulse, and a visible effect on the enemy. The second phase is kinetic ejection. This is where your character and the shotgun become well acquainted with your symbiotic relationship. As you rack the pump, the visual feedback of the weapon's industrial nature and the audio feedback of metal sliding against metal pulls you not only into the inner workings of the shotgun, but also your role in bringing this instrument of death to life. All of this is accented by the iconic waxy red wad launching out of the ejection port, with the cherry on top being the iconically distinct sound of a 12 gauge shell hitting the deck. The last phase is kinetic chambering. As your character rams the pump forwards, that imposing sound that means death in all tongues rings in your ear as you pull the trigger again, cycling you right back to phase 1. So now that you're all aware of all the steps involved in using this thing, it becomes easier to balance its power, strength, range, and fire rate in relation to the kinetic handling of the weapon 
rather than basing these things off of the performance of other weapons in different categories. That's why I can list a few examples of well-balanced pump actions with ease. Take the original riot gun from RE4. With Leon's exaggerated pumping having him lift the shotgun to cycle it with all the force his left arm can muster, you expect power from this thing when you shoot it. And let me tell you, it never disappoints. Compare this to the riot gun in the remake, and the only times Leon interacts with anything besides the trigger is when he's reloading. There's nothing wrong with this gun, but there's a reason why it's often compared to a magnum rather than a shotgun. At least the new striker has the exaggerated spread and kinetic reload associated with video game shotguns. The M37 is a great example of a single purpose weapon. You remember when I was talking about guns that make you feel like you're leveling up? This is the exact opposite. A single purpose weapon is a tool with no other contemporary for comparison. A single weapon for a single job, where you get better at the game as you begin to understand how and where to deploy this weapon better. The M37 single purpose is to clear out close range assault teams when your back is up against the wall, and by god, this compact package screams rip and tear at point blank. The M37 will send guys flying. It's balanced out by having its accuracy drop off, but it's hardly a surprise when you lay eyes on this gun and get a feel for that just on the compact nature of it. Also, the reload has Snake utilize a speed loader. This fragile piece of equipment is often used in competitions to save time on reloads. While not as kinetic as the usual manual feeding and the hard pump, it's an immersive way to speed up reloads. The close range nature of a pump action shotgun makes it an irreplaceable source of comfort in horror games. Resident Evil 7 Shotgun is one of my favorite video game shotguns. The pump is kinetic, but fast. The reload builds intimacy with the gun. And the power is undeniable. I feel safer when adventuring through the Baker Mansion with this, and I definitely feel more vulnerable the second that ammo counter hits zero. I've struggled with making a best video game shotguns video for years now, because I find after my fave 4, I have to struggle to not fill the list with a bunch of Resident Evil shotguns. That being said, RE3 Remake's Benelli is my second favorite video game shotgun, beaten out only by... Jill's Benelli simultaneously is a great example of a pump action and a semi-auto shotgun. When she first finds it, it's similar to RE4's riot gun. An exaggerated forceful pump, rough reload, and harsh recoil impulse. Like Resident Evil 7's shotgun, it halts scarier enemies in their tracks. The development team could have stopped here, but no. As you go about Raccoon City, you find upgrades that slowly but surely take this traditional looking pump action and turn it into a semi-auto death dispenser. The fully upgraded version holds more ammo, demanding a lengthy, more aggressive reload. The vicious recoil is just barely under your control, and it takes up more space. But the power you had at the beginning has grown 10 times over. To have a single gun showcase both the strengths and weaknesses of pump actions and semi-autos is insane and must have been really difficult to balance out, but Capcom did this, and they did it really freaking well. The only other time I've seen a semi-auto shotgun presented as an upgrade while still showing some of the advantages that a pump action has over it is in Red Dead Redemption 2. Here we have another level up structure. The 1897 is a mid-tier gun, and the Browning Auto 5 is a late-game gun. Both guns hold the same amount of ammo, both are effective at one-shotting close-range enemies, and both have some serious drawbacks. The 1897 pump-action shotgun has all the kinetic workings that we've already discussed, but it goes a step further by having the player press R2 twice, once to fire, and then once to rack the shotgun. 
Therefore, the gun cycles at a rate that is within your control. This helps with the accuracy and ammo conservation. But those moments where you have to manually press R2 to rack the shotgun will leave you vulnerable, and enemies will take advantage of this. The semi-auto, on the other hand, requires only one pressing of R2, and that's just to pull the trigger to fire. This means as long as you have ammo, enemies won't be able to catch you off guard. However, if you've gotten used to the manual cycling most guns have in the game, it's common to fire off an extra round just because your muscle memory is used to that. Recoil is felt more with the higher fire rate. And the Browning Auto 5 perfectly illustrates a semi-auto shotgun reality. They are hungry, hungry hippos. You will chew through your ammunition stores. So while the semi-auto is an undeniable level up, the player is still left yearning for the control of their pump action. Remember how I said the M37 was a good example of a single purpose weapon? Well, Halo Combat Evolved is the ultimate example of a single-purpose sandbox. Every gun, enemy, and vehicle has its own unique application and works in conjunction with the rest of the sandbox. Perfect balance. Hey, yo, look who fell asleep first. Prank him, John. <laughs> you already know. The M90 Cause shotgun is a close range slash mid range crowd control most effective against unshielded opponents. At mid range, at close range, you can chew down something with a shield. It has a consistent spread, stopping power, and the most kinetic feel out of any video game shotgun. Why? Tell me, do you see something here that is unique about this shotgun when compared to all of the others that we've discussed? Boom! Right there. It feeds and ejects through the top of the gun. This is basically a backwards Ithaca 37. Every ejected shell, loaded shell, and mechanical motion is right within view. So as you actuate the pump at Mach 5, you are witness to every response this gun has to your actions. Couple this with the fact that the gun is matched perfectly against the flood, and how it was the original I feel safer now shotgun. And it's easy to see why this is my favorite gun in all of gaming. Now again, this isn't to say that semi-auto shotguns are inferior, because there's a lot of good examples, like the non-lethal single-purpose Urugan combat shotgun pistol. It's a unique weapon, it has probably the most kinetic reloads in the game, and features a realistic non-lethal ammo type. But there's a reason why I knew pump action would win in the poll that I put up yesterday. It's just easier to make a good pump action because there's so much more cool things that happen besides pointing and shooting. Anyways, this has been Deflated Ballsack, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.